Hi, I'm Rick Barron, and I want to talk today about diabetic lumbosacral radiculoplexopathy. So here's a case that's illustrative of this problem. So this is a 65-year-old diabetic. Uh, the, the woman's been diabetic for two years on oral diabetic therapy, and she has had tingling in the toes for a year, so she probably had some pre-existing diabetic sensory neuropathy in the distal feet. But now she's got leg pain and weakness, and uh, for the last six months, it began in the left leg, radiating from the lumbar region into, into the posterior leg, and then two months it began in the right leg. Uh, she had an MRI which showed minimal degenerative disease, but she ended up having a laminectomy, and post-op she kept getting worse and she couldn't walk. She had a 20-pound weight loss over six months. She was put on gabapentin and tricyclics with no help, and at this point a neurology consult was put in. So on exam, uh, she had quad atrophy, left more than right. Uh, her arm strength was normal, uh, but in her legs, she had severe uh, weakness in the hip flexors and hip abductors, uh, knee extensors and flexors and ankle dorsiflexors and everters, and it was much worse on the left than the right, the leg that it began in. She had no reflexes in her legs, but they were present in the arms, and she had a... a loss of touch and, uh, and vibration uh, in, in the toes and up to the ankles. So what pattern is this? And we've talked before about the 10 classic neuropathic patterns. And so this patient had asymmetric proximal and distal weakness with sensory loss, or the MP4 pattern. And this is the pattern of uh, a lesion in multiple roots or plexus. So what diagnosis is this? Well, I gave that away at the, in the opening slide, but uh, the diagnosis here is diabetic lumbosacral radiculoplexopathy. So uh, her lab showed uh, some, uh, some mild random glucose elevations with a hemoglobin A1C of 6.5. Her nerve conduction showed low amplitude perineal and tibial uh, uh, motor potentials with some uh, appropriate conduction, uh, velocity slowing. Searles were absent bilaterally, and the upper extremity nerve conductions were normal. On EMG, she had fibrillations not only distally, but also in the proximal leg muscles and paraspinous. So given that you think the diagnosis is diabetic lumbosacral radiculoplexopathy, what's the best treatment? Should you give her immunomodulating agents uh, uh, or, uh, uh, or, or something else? And I believe the answer is break the pain cycle, give her narcotics, and aggressive physical therapy. So this patient got a fentanyl patch for uh, uh, long-term pain relief, got oxycodone um, for short-term pain relief. We broke the pain cycle. Her pain began to improve. We did vigorous physical therapy. And over two weeks, she began beginning to walk, and she had slow improvement over six months. So the entity of diabetic lumbosacral radiculoplexopathy has been known uh, since the late 1800s when uh, Dr. Bruns uh, in Germany first described it. it uh, there were a number of papers about it in the 1950s by Dr. Garland as well, um, and it's been called various names. The, one of the names is diabetic amyotrophy, which I really don't like that word. What, it just means loss of uh, muscle trophy from diabetes, and that's because of the atrophy. But uh, what it really is is multiple small infarcts in the roots and plexus in an asymmetric fashion that can involve one leg and then can occasionally go to the other leg. It can occur in a, a diabetic who's either well controlled or poorly controlled. It can occur in a diabetic who's on oral meds or on insulin. And a third of the patients we found are new diabetics. So the neurologist is actually the first uh, 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 person often uh, to, to arrive at the diagnosis of diabetes. So the typical presentation that was exhibited in the case I just showed is back pain and thigh pain. It can overshadow the weakness. The weakness is both proximal and distal that occurs over days or weeks. Uh, and uh, it begins in one leg and can stay in one leg, but at times it can uh, spread to the other leg as well. The patient may or may not notice new sensory symptoms because a number of them have an underlying diabetic distal sensory neuropathy, and usually ankle and knee reflexes are lost. A third of the patients lose a lot of weight. The reason is unknown. Is it uh, is it because muscle atrophy, or they're not eating because of pain, or maybe some uh, hypermetabolic condition? Uh, usually, the nerve conductions just show low amplitudes in an axonal pattern. 
EMG does show diffuse fibrillations proximally and distally. The CSF protein can be elevated. Uh, and uh, also, it's been shown that the SED rate can occasionally be elevated. We used to do nerve biopsies in this disorder. We don't anymore, but when we did, we showed asymmetric fiber loss and sometimes some very subtle perivascular inflammation, but I've always thought that was an epiphenomena. So the course of this usually worsens uh, in a gradual or stepwise manner over a period of weeks and sometimes months. It eventually stabilizes and plateaus and ultimately slowly improves. The worsening phase in, in some of the uh, uh, really severe cases can be up to 18 months. And this is a graphic out of a paper that uh, I published with the Ohio State group uh, when I was actually uh, a fellow with them that, uh, where we described uh, about 16 cases of rather severe diabetic lumbosacral radiculoplexopathy, and we were able to show that some of them progressed for many months before they turned the corner. Um, the bottom row in all these graphs is the leg strength, and the top row is the arm strength, which was normal. So diabetic lumbosacral radiculoplexopathy is really the neurologist's neuromuscular pattern. Um, it often seems that only a neurologist is able to make this diagnosis. If they've been to many doctors, often after they've had surgery, Often a neurologist is the only uh, a physician that can give the patient and their family the best recommendations on, 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 on what to do with regard to therapy and actually what therapies to avoid, such as surgery, uh, and, and to give the most reasonable prognosis. So this is really the uh, neuromuscular disorder and the pattern where the neurologist shines and, and is very, very important in, in case management. Thank you very much.